you know, I, I don't like to say anything discouraging. <clears throat> I really don't. I know it's not the best thing you can do. But to a certain degree, I just have to be honest with you. I have to share a little bit of this burden which is being put on my shoulders. Otherwise I'll be just playing. Oh, I'm so happy. Yeah, something actually is quite some burden. I was able to rub shoulders with the rich and famous for six weeks. I never did that before in my life. And without wanting to criticize them in particular, without wanting to be ungrateful for the good things they may be doing without me knowing. I found it extremely frustrating to be around the rich and famous who all proclaim some kind of spirituality. Everybody's Hari Om, Hari Om, and, and Swamiji here, Swamiji there. But they are there is a generalization. I met so many people and you know, in a large majority they're participating in things which are like topmost unconsciousness. <laughs> Whatever it may be concretely oil business, uh, fast food chains of food with all kinds of chemicals, gene genetically manipulated foods. And I wasn't silent because I was outstanding protector of Mother Earth in this event. So I addressed some of the issues. Like I was one with one person, he was responsible for all the Indonesian rainforests to be clubbed down to make make palm oil exports for the Indian food industry, of which he was the owner. And he was also the owner of the palm oil plantations. You can imagine that dimension, you know? When I looked at him, he started shaking and he said, we are trying to go organic, we are trying to go organic. <laughs> huh? You know, I, I was burdened by all this energy of being there with them but not can, cannot come out and say the truth completely and getting them involved because if I would have really started talking they would have thrown me out. And <laughs> of course our topic in the India was Ganga and Yamuna and all of them pledged to be part of the cleaning act of, of Ganga and Yamuna. How much that will be truth, time will show, I, I have no not yet <coughs> full access to the information, even though I joined the Ganga Action Pariwa. And I'm happy to be part of a movement which is very strongly proclaiming we need a Ganga and a Yamuna and all the rivers in the world to be taken care of who understand and support that water, clean water, is a right, it's a lifeline. And whoever pollutes this is a great sinner. So, 
I'm happy to be part of this organization which was started by Chidananda Saraswati Muniji of Paramartha Nikitan. You probably all know them, who have watched a little bit of our Kumbha Mela activities. Even I'm invited of participating on further activities along the same line of environmental protection and so on and so uh, with the same uh, Ganga Action Party one. And since I'm individually working on Ganga and Yamuna, both in Mayapur and in Vrindavan, I have a personal feeling, concern. So I'm very happy to be ally with somebody who is actually thinking and for fighting for the same cause. Even though he's a very, very powerful uh, partner, if you want to call it that way. Because the rich and famous all come to him. That's why we met the rich and famous. So therefore, also he has a great responsibility and a great capacity to actually do major things. Which we report to you as we observe them. Anyhow, it was a burden for me. A burden of not... It's like... I was feeling like a basketball player who can reach all the way up to the basket and just before the ball goes in, it goes to the other side. And you do that again and again and again, it doesn't go in. So this is kind of, I mean you doing an effort, you're jumping all the way up, you get the ball up there, no? But don't go in the basket. <laughs> that produces a burden, no? Of course, I'm exaggerating in the sense that still we were utilized by Krishna successfully. And it was appreciated, it was recognized on nationwide level. Because I met many people and got many invitations out of what we did there and so on. <coughs> But if one day we can say there's fresh water released in the Ganga, there is in the Yamuna, there is actually no raw sewage going into the holy rivers. If one day I can report this up to you, then I will tell now the balls went into the basket. Until now we just lifted it up and keep the ball up there. So the ball has not totally returned, but it's not gone in, so it's a it's kind of a suspension. No? Srila Srinamaj gave another example, he gave the football example. He says when the football is flying in the football field here and there, ball and then ball and then ball. And ball Everybody looks, uh, 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 uh. but when the football gets close to the goal, like within seven meters, that with one kick it can go into the goal, everybody's like, and if the ball is like one meter before the goal, uh, and if it's 10 centimeter between before the goal and not in the hand of the door guard, of the goal guard, everybody's just like faint. No, 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 yes, yes, yes. <laughs> huh? So then how does it feel when you have the, the thing there up and it not going in, not going in, you know, it's... Now the river Ganges, after Uttaraka, Uttarakashi, there's many kilometers, there's no more Ganges. 
disappeared. It went into pipes to create electricity. And, 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 and they are planning many more of such dams and things like that. Practically, the, now there is, we have a documentary about dams. If you're interested, I can show you a few of these things. I think I have them on my hard disk. Somebody really genius had to look at my hard disk because I don't know what I have on my hard disks. It's all, I, I, I haven't plugged in a hard disk. I don't have a computer anymore. So, I don't look at it. I just, my secretary is here. I put some stuff on your hard disk. Well, you don't look yourself. You don't know where, where it is, what it is, man. But I think, because in Ganga Action Paribas we prepared many very good uh, documentaries to, to document the problem. And the Terry Dam is a very, very big problem. As a matter of fact, the technology of dams is already being questioned. To the point that dams are actually not a good way of producing electricity. Even to that degree, but while we talk this, they're making huge dams in the Amazons, which are so destructive and so terrible, because these big dam companies, they are getting money from all this. You know, all this, I don't want to go into details here, otherwise we're going to have a class on dams. And we are not here on Jagannath Misha Utsav to discuss the situation of dams around the world. But it's just like that. Uh, sometimes one has to be informed, you know, for certain things that sometimes you have to be informed. If you're not informed at all, well, then you just don't know what's going on. And maybe you even support something which is illusion. Like some people think GM food is something. What's the big problem about it? Why is Whereas those who do know what GMO foods do uh, to the living organisms, they would advert you with great seriousness, do not consume GM food. It has been a struggle in Europe to get them to oblige the companies to put on the package whether there's GM food inside. And one of the greater problems are the GM oils. Because the GM oils, they often used all over and people don't know that there's GM oils. Anyhow, so I, I just wanted to share with you a little bit that load of frustration which I have gone through by trying to do something, trying to make a difference. And we made a difference to a certain degree. We were quite lucky in our efforts. We were quite lucky and we are still carrying that spirit to other places. Our semi-drama demonstrations which are uh, now being repeated in South America and successfully we are able to reach out to many people with these new ideas and new concerns and for those who have any doubt whether this is a Vaishnava program Sometimes some devotees may say, why is this, what is this new, new approach? I can assure them that I've not forgotten the preaching of Krishna consciousness. It is that on those levels, sometimes you preach just by being there. Preaching in a different way. I was telling, oh, actually I, yesterday I was telling the, the, the light post, how you call those in the lighthouse. ocean? Lighthouse. The lighthouse services we are doing. In Kumbamela we were doing lighthouse service and in East Germany 
when we started our mission there, we were doing lighthouse service. Just going around in the dhoti with your japa and chanting and waiting that somebody asks you, hey, who are you? What are you doing here? That was all we were doing. We couldn't distribute books. We, we had no temple. It was in one-on-one. -on -one. You know, one-on-one -on -one is when you have a medical problem, you want to have a one-on-one -on -one therapy session with a doctor. When you have a big physical problem or mental problem, you don't want to go to a place where there's 100 patients and one doctor standing in front of them and saying, you know, all this problem could be solved, it could be like this. But no, you want, you want him to say, what's your problem? Where does it pain? How do you, when it started, what symptoms it have? Can I see it? Your skin is now getting all these pimples. Okay, let me see it, these pimples. And, and you want a one-on-one -on -one session for your health. Right? <laughs> 